so this particular technology mm -hmm. currently the way you know the, the, this application is just to get measurements of, yeah. to get a diagram and a measurement but today it's measurements but there's so much more that's definitely going to be coming down the pike um, as i mentioned before kind of like a a hover style report where you're doing like a wall measurement itself that's something that we absolutely have in the pipeline itself and probably sometime next year we'll be able to do it um, the idea that right now we can deliver something in 15 minutes well eventually it'll be 15 milliseconds because the drone app will be drawing it there won't be a person drawing it on the back end so time will happen um, probably more importantly is the idea that you can get a um, roof object identification so now we're calling out the pipe jacks and the turtle vents and the goosenecks and and a variety of different uh, accoutrements that you might find on the roof itself and eventually the idea is that it won't just be picking up like, oh, there's a pipe jack. No, it's a one and a half inch pipe jack versus a four inch pipe jack. Thank you very much, uh, Matt, for having me. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Marcus, and uh, I am the co-founder of Certify. Um, it's a company that started a few years ago with the advent of um, drones getting into the drone space. Uh, I have a partner, his name is Jerome Reyes, and uh, together we are kind of leading the industry when it comes to utilizing drones in the insurance space. Um, my uh, company itself uh, creates roof type, uh, rooftop measurements uh, that can be done in real time, which means that you can launch a drone, land it in about 90 seconds, and essentially get a fully baked report back in about 15 minutes and an ESX file in about an hour. So that's like where we're coming from. That's where the market is starting from. And we're just going to build from beyond that. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, you know, one of my prime objectives or prime objections, I guess I could say to drones in the past mm -hmm. is like, well, I got to, you know, I'm thinking I've got to fly it up. I got to fly it around a bunch of times. I got to, sure. you know, zoom in, zoom out. Um, but having just been able to send it up for 90 seconds, I mean, that, that saves that saves battery and we don't have to carry around a bazillion batteries. That's um, right. Tell me, yeah, tell me a little bit about your your background sure. in this industry because I think okay. you, you kind of, yeah. you're, you're a bit of a, an old school tech guy. Yeah, which is kind of crazy because I consider myself like the young guy. You know, like I'm the guy who's walking out of the grocery store with a shopping cart and on the back of it, I'm like flying down with the groceries, um, you know, uh, in full. Two wheelies across the parking lot. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going for it. So yeah, yeah, the old guy, no, that's not me. So, um, but I have been in the industry since about 2002. Uh, that's when I started with a company called Pictometry. Uh, Pictometry was oblique aerial images that are measurable. And Pictometry was a software that I used to kind of get, put Pictometry on a map when it came to the insurance companies back in 2005 sold the data for uh, these oblique images that you see like on Bing Maps, on Google now, you know, the 45 degree angled view. Um, sold that for Katrina to like Allstate, State Farm, Liberty Mutual, a variety of different customers that were associated uh, back in like 2005 with Katrina. Um, worked with Exactware as well and brought up that data uh, to their attention. Um, I believe they had a aerial sketch program that you can create roof measurements, but you just add the pitch in. And then later on, um, worked it where uh, Eagle View was launched from that program as well, creating 3D models to output 2D measurements so that people can basically, you know, remote press a button and get the measurements back. That's kind of like um, I was kind of like a forerunner for all of that. And then eventually my company, Pictometry and Eagle, emerged. And then I worked at Hover for a period of time after that. These days, there are a growing number of remote work opportunities for independent adjusters. With Scoper Writer programs popping up all over the place, you can do photo and scope in the field, or you can just sit at home in your pajajays and write the estimates on what the scoper got when they were out in the field. And it doesn't matter where you live, as long as you have the internet, you can write claims as a desk adjuster, but you can't get that sweet gig without being licensed. So if you live in Nebraska, which doesn't require an adjuster to be licensed, you still have to have a New York license to write claims somebody scoped in New York, makes sense? 
Of all the credentials you need as an adjuster, there really is none more important than your adjuster license, especially your first one. You're gonna need it to do just about everything else, including some adjuster schools even require you to have one before they'll let you enroll. So you need Adjuster Pro. Adjuster Pro provides a comprehensive and easy to use way to get and maintain your adjuster licenses. Most importantly, Adjuster Pro was founded by independent adjusters and the team at Adjuster Pro is dedicated to helping you thrive as an adjuster with resources for every licensing state, including dead simple CE packages. Adjuster Pro is the gold standard for adjuster licensing. You'll find everything you need to get licensed in one place. Go to adjustertv.com slash adjuster pro right now. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, however, I mean, that's that's pretty amazing stuff, what, what yeah. Hover can do. So what, what were you doing over at Hover? At Hover, um, I would have been necessarily um, just a normal you know, business development person uh, working with the different contractors, not necessarily insurance folks, only because at the time they didn't have ESX files, which is kind of important. I believe they have it now. Uh, so I worked with a lot of the different roofing carriers, especially along the East Coast. I'm sorry. Yeah, roofing carriers, roofing contractors, uh, especially along the East Coast. Yeah. Okay, so, very um, cool. Yeah, but very cool. familiar with it. Um, 3D modeling, um, whether it's coming from the ground or coming from the air uh, to produce uh, roof measurements or eventually siding measurements as well. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's a big deal. And I think that, you know, it's... Speeding up the workflow for for people in the field, whether they're a contractor or an adjuster, being able to, you know, you can spend a lot of time at a house, and and a lot of that time, or you know, you can spend a lot of time at a house, yep. diagramming and measuring things like siding and roofs, and if you have a, uh, a really steep roof or extremely complex roof or a dangerous, you know, or otherwise inaccessible roof, that's right. Having some additional technology to help you make quick work of that. I think helps the process overall, especially if it's accurate. So yeah, it does. Kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, so you're, so you were hover for a little bit, and then kind of work, bring us up to speed on on, sure. on how you you're what you're doing now, kind yeah, of how that yeah. evolved. That that's great. And so um, Certify, uh, it's a company that started in 2016. Uh, what we've been doing um, since then has been executing off of a patent that we received in 2017. It goes back to 2011, but it was only received in 2017. What that patent does is allows for drones to create job estimates, um, essentially fly and output measurements in real time. Uh, there's more to it than that, but that's kind of like the simplified version. Um, and then specifically, um, what we're doing today is going to be something that's going to be uh, automated as well. So our deliverable is the ability of creating these measurements in real time, 15 minutes, but eventually it'll be like 15 milliseconds because the drone app will be drawing it. And the idea here also is we talk about roofing. That's really easy for us right now. We can go up, take one picture, come back down and land and be able to um, extract multiple pitches using one single image. That's kind of like where we started from. Um, however, uh, eventually the drone itself will do sighting. It'll shoot inwards, it'll take multiple pictures and a 3D, I hate to say a 3D model, but at least a roof measurement and sighting measurement report can be drawn from that. It might even be easier sure. than just walking around the premises because your drone is really doing it. They're avoiding the fences, they're avoiding the dogs, or avoiding the alleys. There's a variety of different things that you could do with a drone that you would do avoid when you're up in the air and there's nothing really stopping you from taking pictures inward rather than shooting right. from the ground. So, um, yeah. but yeah, we, we've been working on it uh, for quite a while. Uh, we've been beta testing for this app called the Certified Roof App for quite a while. Uh, and it's ready to launch uh, probably sometime this summer, uh, like fully uh, supported. And it's a situation right now where we can deliver what I mentioned earlier, uh, a roof measurement report in about 15 minutes, an ESX file in about an hour. That's kind of like what the adjusters want. And what's really nice is it's all done on demand. So you can order it um, at that moment and then get it back. It's not like you're ordering it and getting it back a few hours or a day later. You're going to get it back in a, a very short amount of time while you're still in the field. That's probably going to help the adjusters right. be able to write up all their, um, all their caseload. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
so yeah, so let's kind of talk about the sort of the current state of drones in mm -hmm. the industry. Um, I'm, I know, I'm sure contractors probably are using them a lot. Um, sure. I know that there's adjusters, I've talked to adjusters that are using them. Um, how, if, how far have we come in the past, I don't know, five years or even three years sure. with the technology and, and um, sure. you know, um, some of the... A lot of the adjusters themselves would have had a product called either a Phantom 4 or a Phantom 4 Pro. That's the ones that got the legs at the bottom. Uh, the Mavics kind of came out within the past three years. It's much more compact. The wings and the propellers fold onto each other. So it's a lot easier to take in and out. You don't have to bring a case with it. You can put it in a backpack and you can bring it with you. You can bring it with you on the plane. Um, so that the way I describe it is the drones themselves have gotten to the point where you know, they used to be these very large things, and maybe you still see those some of these larger carriers working for catastrophes. But in general, they've gotten smaller and more compact, uh, more user friendly, um, and that allows them to uh, utilize it more often. Um, so that that aspect is kind of like a big deal. Um, when it comes to just like satellites in the sky and being able to identify like, where you are. There used to be, you know, maybe five or six satellites that a drone would go up, see like where they are and say, oh, you're this spot in this space. Well, when you're seeing like 17 of them now, um, you can be much more accurate in terms of like where you are, which means there's not going to be a lot of um, like when the drone itself is returning back. There's a difference between like, you know, returning it back to your hand and returning it nine feet away. Well, now it can return back to like where you started from. It's very, very uh, it's much more accurate in terms of like where the drone itself is landing from and taking off from. Sure. Um, and that's also going to help with uh, geolocating all of that. So um, that's also probably from a technology perspective, there's that. Um, the drones themselves have come a long way in terms of their sensor capabilities. Um, and I really like to think about it as two different types of drones now. There are economy drones and then there are professional drones. So most adjusters have got the professional drones at this point. They've got a Phantom 4 Pro, uh, which has got a really great sensor, a uh, really great uh, camera sensor, or they've got these higher end Mavics. The guys that are kind of like dabbling, um, they've got these Mavic Minis or uh, Mavic Airs, um, Sparks, things like that. So those right. ones, they don't necessarily have the bandwidth, but they also don't have the sensors to keep you safe. So a lot of these guys, they'll fly a drone, they'll upgrade it from their Christmas gift that they got one year, and then they crash and it's like, oh, I don't feel good about it. And But the reason that they crashed it, it's because they didn't have a sensor on it that kind of kept them safe. And now there's drones that have got six sensors, you know, uh, front, back, uh, two sides, up, down, kind of like an air bubble or, you know, bubble wrap, I guess in the sky. So if there's sure. a chimney, yep, stop. Oh, there's a tree, yep, stop. Um, and uh, that's kind of like what's what's been really great is you don't see these drones, you don't see videos anymore of the drones crashing. You don't see them flying away anymore. They got the return to home feature. If the battery's dying, now the drones themselves can come back. So the technology has gotten much, much better um, over time uh, over the last few years, ever since the industry really started um, you know, with the FAA kind of like having the regulations to say, yeah, now you can fly commercially. That didn't really exist until 2016. And ever since then, it's gotten better and better and better. Yeah, well, speaking of the FAA, let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, it, my understanding is, is that when you, if you're in a, a neighborhood and maybe you're close to an airport, like mm -hmm. O'Hare or something yeah, like that, right. that you have to get on the get on the phone, call air traffic control, right. know your flight plan, and they didn't know, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, um, you and I talked a little bit yep. um, prior to this, and you said that there's it's that's actually even changed. So can you kind of go into a little bit? Sure, of sure. On that? There, there's two different. There's three different types of airspace. There's unrestricted, which is no problem. You're middle of Iowa. There's no airports around. That's totally fine. You can just fly. That's like most of the nation. Um, when it comes to like restricted versus controlled airspace, restricted airspace is like military installations, uh, where the president lives, uh, federal buildings and things like that. So there are restrictions that are there for a reason. You're probably not doing a lot of work there. Um, but controlled airspace is, is that's where you're near your airports. And there are now apps where you just ask for permission. They tell you in advance how high you can fly. 
um, you know, generally speaking, right around the fence line, you can probably fly as much as low as 50 feet because your aircraft is so much higher than even that 50 feet. Generally speaking, um, you can fly about 400 feet, no issues. But as you get closer and closer and closer and closer to the airport, that goes down. You ever feel like you've been thrown to the wolves by the IA firms you work for, like you're just a number on a roster? Wouldn't it be nice to work with a firm who's big enough to get plenty of work, but still small enough to know you by your first name? Then let me tell you about my friends at the Oklahoma-based IA firm, Paysetter Claim Service. Founded in 1997, the thing that sets Paysetter apart is their relentless pursuit of excellence. They hold themselves and their team of adjusters to a higher standard of quality. And now with their advanced all-in-one claims platform called Evo, You'll get a real-time Uber-style map and communication link to the insured, automatic messages sent to customers throughout the process, file review automation, and a fast, accurate scope with Paysetter's partnership with Hover. Hover is integrated directly into Evo, making for a smooth and seamless field scoping experience for you as the adjuster. Technology is moving faster than ever, and Paysetter is right there at the cutting edge. And Paysetter is bringing training to a city near you. Check out their summer tour dates at adjustertv.com slash Paysetter. You can ask for permission to fly just using an app that's either on your phone or your tablet and saying, hey, I'm here now. I want to get permission to fly it. Let me fly this particular drone at this time, at this altitude. And generally speaking, they'll come back and say, yeah, you go ahead, do it. And it's an automated flight deal. Um, there's a there's an app called uh, Kitty Hawk, and there's another one called AirMap. You just ask for the permissions, and you're essentially working with the FAA uh, to get that done. It's all done automated. Um, and if there's any issues, you can um, send off an email truly um, and ask for the permission. They can basically look that over. They'll give you 24 hours notice prior to like when you wanted to do it to give you that feedback that says, yes, you may or may not fly. So yeah, that's, most, that's most times nice. you'll be able to do it. Most times you'll be able to do it just by asking. Sure. Questions. Yeah. And that, that's, that definitely shortens the, again, I mean, we're always talking about on the, at least the property claim side is like, how can we be faster? How can we be more efficient? Mm -hmm. If I have to get on the phone, if I'm always having to swap out batteries or I, the batteries are all dead. Cause I, you know, if you're sending the phone, the throwing up for 90 seconds and yeah, that's you know, just a measurement at this point. But the other guys, yeah. I mean, so now drones, I think they had a less of a battery life. It's gotten to the point where uh, I think the most recent model is called a Mavic Air 2. I think that came out with like 35 minutes of flight time. Um, oh, wow. Most of yeah. them have about 30 minutes of flight time now. So you can do a really good job. I mean, these things fly really fast, right? Um, you're going to get there really quickly. You're not going to be spending a lot of time. There are companies that are out there, though, that are doing 3D modeling that will chew up a battery life, and they will kind of, um, like, you know, mow the sky back and forth and back and forth and crisscross right. back and forth, and you're mowing that sky. That does take time. You could probably do it on one battery. Um, not necessarily the most ideal way of doing things, um, but if you're just doing things manually, hey, I'm going to go from the chimney. Now I'm going to go to the rake. Now I'm going to go to the gutter line. Um, you can do that super fast, and you should be able to do it on one battery. Um, just FYI. So this particular technology, mm -hmm. currently, the way you know the, the, this application is just to get measurements of yeah. to get a diagram and a measurement. Today it's building. measurements, but there's so much more that's definitely going to be coming down the pike. Um, as I mentioned before, kind of like a, a hover style report where you're doing like a wall measurement itself. That's something that we absolutely have in the pipeline itself. And probably sometime next year, we'll be able to do it. Um, the idea that right now we can deliver something in 15 minutes. Well, eventually it'll be 15 milliseconds because the drone app will be drawing it. There won't be a person drawing it on the back end. So time will happen. Um, probably more importantly, is the idea that you can get a um, roof object identification. So now we're calling out the pipe jacks and the turtle vents and the goosenecks and, and a variety of different uh, accoutrements that you might find on the roof itself um, sure. and be able to pull that information in. So whether we're doing it automatically or just somebody eyeballing it with the drone imagery, you can see that level of detail that you, it should be easy and identifiable. And eventually, the idea is that it won't just be picking up like, oh, there's a pipe jack. No, it's a one and a half inch pipe jack versus a four inch pipe jack. 
because the level right. of detail that you see in the in the um, images themselves um, is so incredible that you will we'll be able to measure off of that too. So roof object identification, uh, thermal, um, that's something also that's coming down the pike, not necessary for adjusters, but um, the idea here is that you can do moisture detection with a drone. You gotta have the right drone. It might be an expensive drone. It might be something that's $6,500, but it is something that uh, we'll be able to put into our reports. And then some of the other reports too, might just be the idea that um, damage detection. So what is damage detection? It might be um, taking pictures, whether it's um, you know a dozen pictures or hundreds of pictures, probably just a dozen, um, and calling to attention, hey, there is obvious damage here. You know, you're missing a shingle, you're missing a crack, you know, there's a cracked tile. Um, you're able to say, you know, oh, the crickets, you know, got all these leaves built up on it. You'll be you'll be able to see a lot of information with that. And then somebody, whether it's manually or automated, um, calls attention to that. So producing a report like that is something that we are absolutely going to be doing because it's something that nobody else can do. You can't get that from a hover. You don't get it, the level of quality, uh, the detail from an Eagle view, but you can get it from a drone. Um, right. So those concepts of, of being able to not just take a single picture, but maybe multiple pictures for different uses, whether it's drone or whether it's a documentation report, an inspection report, um, whether it's 3D modeling, like, like, you know, whether it's like the hover and doing the wall report, um, all of that kind of thing, um, that's all definitely in the pipeline where we can deliver off of that uh, probably within the next year, honestly. Um, it's, it's being actively worked on. Um, there are companies that are out there that are doing hail um, identification. Uh, we don't think that that's a good current How's this one? The industry itself isn't good enough at this point. That's what we think. Um, we think that um, the companies that are doing that, um, there's just too many false positives that give you the idea that there's so much hail uh, on these right. particular spots. Um, they will, um, you know, it could be algae, it could be uh, bird poop, uh, it could be um, just the idea that you have to audit these reports and it just takes too long when you start doing the field testing with those types of companies, you realize that that's why nobody's speaking about these. I want to be able to identify hail. And it's like, great. Obvious hail, it's easy. The really nitty gritty hail, it's hard. And when it is hard, it's not, it's just not there yet is the best way I could describe right. that industry. There's about four or five companies that are attempting to do that. Some of them are working with the carriers, but based on the field trials that we've seen and, and gotten the feedback from, you know, it's just, it's taking too long for them to get the results that they need. You know, facing a lawsuit can be a terrifying and stressful experience, jeopardizing your years of hard work and success. If you don't have adequate insurance coverage as an adjuster, you're putting yourself at great financial risk. If you make your living from handling claims as an independent adjuster, then you must get errors and emissions and general liability insurance coverage. It doesn't matter if you're a 1099 or a W-2 or you work carrier direct, Protect yourself with professional liability insurance from Kaplik. To find out more and to download the insurance for adjusters free guide, head on over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV. That's cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Sure, sure, that makes sense. I, I think, you know, that's that's still probably the last mile, you know, issue with with this kind of technology is yeah. that when you have that borderline hail or you yes. have a newer roof that has, you know, it's got hits on it, but maybe they're not like big black spots. Like if you right. two right. and a half inch, two and three quarter inch hail that was diamond hard, it's going to leave big black. It's going to put holes in the roof, right? right? But when you have inch and a half or inch and three quarter hail, you have still have to get up there and feel for it. You do um, you feel the bruising, you know, you got to smell yeah. the granules, um, it's like, You're right. Exactly. <laughs> Smell the granules. Smell that tar. You know? But yeah, for 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 tree damage, for yes. wind damage, you know, yeah. any hurricane, you know, especially yes. this is the thing that I always say, you know, even though up until now, I mm -hmm. was kind of like, well, you know, 
if we're trying to do claims on a volume basis, um, we are, we, I don't think a drone, I didn't think a drone necessarily would fit into that because okay. it takes, you know, too long. I, I'm, a, I, I'm not going to get an accurate hail report because a lot of what we do is hail. Yeah. Um, but for inaccessible roofs, for a roof mm -hmm. that has a four foot diameter tree laying across it or had a four foot diameter tree laying all the way across it, which on hurricanes, you'll, especially in like the Northeast or even in the Midwest, we have big windstorm and those great big, you know, old trees laying across some, you don't want to walk on that. Right? Right. Even though if it looks okay, yes, you're going, you, you have a high po po potential of going right through that roof. It's very, very dangerous. Houses that have been compromised because of fire, you know, in a part of the house, in the attic, all the, the rafters are all crisped up and burnt. You know, you step on them and they break. Right. You're going through. Yeah. Or, Safety or even a, a, a uh, issue, right? Like being able to walk. Yeah, on exactly. It. If, if you can't walk on it, well, you know, why, why am I up there? So um, that's where the drone comes in itself. You know, um, I put together something a while ago. Um, maybe I could just read you a couple ideas here. But it's a sure. it's a it's a white paper about how drones are being used by adjusters, and so reviewing the impact areas. These are just the broad con categories, but reviewing the impact areas, stopping further damage, increasing on-site productivity, increasing scheduling productivity, uh, reducing risk, increasing accuracy of the claim itself, and then reducing expenses. Those are kind of like the major categories that um, most adjusters would say, hey, you know what? Um, I feel pretty good about using a drone now. They didn't, might not have thought about it, but like you were saying before, um, like I had somebody, you mentioned trees before, um, like wildfire damage, just the idea that they could go up, take one single straight down picture, see the, where the crisp trees were, um, and be able to count the circles of the tree trunks, okay? Like these are missing. Yeah. So in California, I guess, this is like a big deal to be able to say how many trees were actually there and you're going to have to replace these things. Um, yep. You know, the idea here also is just, um, you know, the inaccessible buildings, whether it's seasonal roads, inaccessible roofs where you got three stories um, or, you know, time consuming access to roof opening from the inside, like a building that's kind of like totally sealed. Yeah, I can fly the yeah. drone now and be able to, you know, pick that up. Um, we talk about, um, let's see here, lightning damage, see the burn marks, heat damage, checking for ripples or stretching of the EPDM roofing material and the fire origin. You're able to see that even much better with a drone because you're getting more of a God's eye view versus like sure. right on top of it. You know, you got to see the whole thing. And, and here you're able to do that with the drone uh, itself. Um, when we talk about, um, you know, stopping further damage, you know, some of these adjusters, um, they're not the lightest people in the world. Uh, so they could be crunching on the, the actual, uh, uh you know, roof itself and making more damage. They prefer not to, um, but that's possible, right? Clay tiles, uh, historic slate tiles. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to walk on clay tile at all. Right. No matter right. how small or big you are. Right. Uh, terracotta, um, all those things. Um, so you've got that, and then just being more efficient while you're in the field itself, being able to document the damage, uh, triaging the damage quickly using the drone. You're not walking it over if you can get it. Where do I even put my ladder up? Where should I even go? And here you can fly around. Okay, there's the spot that I want to put my ladder. It seems simple, but I just saved minutes out in the field just by flying the drone and inspecting it. Sure. And saying, here's where I'm going to place it in a safe, in a safe spot. Um, You've got, uh, obviously, the steep and high claims. That's like a big deal. People always talk about that. Um, and then we talk about um, inspection. Oh, well, gosh. You know, sometimes people even don't even think about it. When you got these drones, they're small enough. You can fly on the inside of the house itself. So you can fly, um, you know, cathedral ceilings, attics, crawl space, vaulted ceilings uh, with your drone just to get some type of inspection inside of that to see if there's any cracks um, you know, among the roof line. Um, you can also, let's see here. Oh gosh. You know, I forgot about this one. Uh, create clear view of damage. Use wind generated by the drone to remove pine needles, leaves, or even snow. So you can there fly you go. that <laughs> and, and aim your drone to, to move it because there is actually wind generated. There is significant wind generated. Um, yeah, so I've, yeah, I've heard absolutely. people say that. And so 
Um, I've got a white paper that people are more than welcome to, to ask for a request. It's on the internet on many of these Facebook groups, but they reach out to me. Um, they, I can send them off a PDF and they can have it. But these are the things that probably an IA firm would have an interest in because those IA firms, they're kind of like more hands off. Like, I don't want to know about this, but at the same time, there are people that work for them that actually use the drones. And I think if they knew how they were using the drones, they'd feel more comfortable giving the permissions that they already do. They already grant permission. Somebody says, I'm out in North Carolina. Um, I'm on a, in, you know, I'm on the shoreline. Uh, I'm on pilings. Can I fly the drone? And literally like 100% of the time they're going to say, yes, yeah, go ahead, fly it. And once they start giving those permissions and they do it on a systematic basis, they're okay with flying the drone. That's what we've found. Um, so right now people are asking for permission. Eventually they just know intuitively they're going to get the permission. They don't even ask for it. They just do their job and ask for forgiveness later. Are you interested in more than just punching a clock and paying the bills? Wouldn't you rather be on the A team surrounded by the best of the best in the industry? Then you need to check out Eberl Claim Service. For well over 30 years, Eberl's philosophy of treating adjusters as they wish to be treated has allowed them to establish a vast network of the most professional, educated, and dedicated adjusters in the industry. So at Eberl, you're in good company. If you're a motivated and compassionate adjuster slash claims professional, Eberl wants you to represent their organization. Go to jobs.eberls.com right now and get started with Eberl Claim Service. Sure, sure, exactly. Yeah, I think, I think that uh, you know, as as the technology evolves, as you know, the insurance industry as a whole, mm -hmm. it's a slow moving industry, right? It, it takes is. a while for it to catch up to technology, and it, even on like laptop and like some of the software that is used at major carriers that have billion dollar revenue every year, mm -hmm. they are like I won't name names, but there's a couple I can think of that have are kind of archaic, mm -hmm. you know technology applications to do certain things in their, in their claims workflow that overlap with other applications that you, in order to set up a claim, you have to go into five pieces of software that don't really talk to each other very well. And yeah. you're repeating things, there's redundancy. And it's like, it's, and they, they just, it's, well, that's just what, you know, we, we built, built all our training around that. This yeah. is how we, you know, this is how everybody knows how to do it. This is what we're, we're going to stick with. It works. Yeah. Right. And, and so that, it takes a little bit of time for them to, to catch up with that. Kind it, of it absolutely does. And, you know, when I was at Pictometry 2002, you think this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oblique aerial images, I'm not just looking at a straight down view. I'm looking at the angle. I'm seeing multiple perspectives. I'm looking back in time. And it was the hardest sale. But the second that there was the idea that um, you could go back and either use it from an underwriting perspective or use it from a um, claims perspective, especially in catastrophe, it's like, oh, take, take my money, take it, take it, please. I mean, it was yeah. really Allstate, a conversation I actually had with Allstate that helped pictometry really start working with roofing contractors and working with adjusters because I had sold them the data. Um, this is going back more than a decade ago. Um, and they said, Jeff, you know, you can measure height and distance and area, but can you get pitch? And what was interesting was I said, what's pitch? Because in five or six years, nobody asked me what pitch was. Like, if we, we have pitch. All state asked that question. Um, and um, we went back, created some tools that allowed for pitch to be drawn on these oblique aerial images. And that's kind of like how it got in motion where it's like, oh, now we can measure roofs. Now we've got a good use for this. Then after the carriers, then the roofing contractors came in. And then after that, the IAs came in. Then Eagle View came in. Right. Like they're all doing these yeah. roof measurements. Um, interesting thing about our technology is kind of like what I mentioned earlier was that we have the ability basically of flying up, taking one picture, coming back down and landing and having like one having um, uh, extracting multiple pitches from it. So when people are looking like at a Google Earth image, they're looking at it and saying, well, I don't know, is it 412, 612? 812 pitch, um, we do. And that's what makes us different than all these other companies that are out there, whether they're creating 3D models or if they're asking for the pitch or they're using Google Street View or they're doing what's called stereo pairs and we're lining up the images and kind of saying, this spot here is the same spot over there. Um, none of that has to actually occur 
through our technology. And that's what really helps us fly the drone faster because we're only really asking for one picture, one single right. down picture, not flying it all around, not getting it from, you know, aerial triangulation, any, any other, any other process, which helps us to be competitive in this industry. Yeah. yeah and I think, I think, uh, you know, just the things that are kind of popping into my head as we're talking, um, one of the a big benefits that I can see of this is if, if, you know, as an adjuster, as, as, a, as a field adjuster, especially as an independent adjuster, mm -hmm. I'm going to create a report. I'm going to write an estimate. I'm going to do all this stuff and I'm going to send it up. Right. Yes. That's not the end of the claim, right? The claim is going to, it's, it, it may be that the, the homeowner has a contractor and they get it all buttoned up within two or three weeks or a month or whatever. It's all done. Mm -hmm. so there's a desk adjuster on the back end somewhere that probably not on site, most likely not on site, who's going to be writing up um, replacement costs, you know, amounts, right? So the insured gets the first check for the actual cash value and then they get the work done. And then the, the carrier sends them the rest of the money, less their deductible, right? That's mm -hmm. every claim that has replacement cost on it almost has that process happening. What a lot of times happens between my inspection in the field as the IA and that final check getting written is that the contractor comes back and says, oh, we found more damage. Oh, the, the adjuster's measurements were off. Oh, this, oh, that. We mm -hmm. need more money. We need more money. We need more money. Right. I've worked as a desk adjuster. If I had, and you know, and I have worked at a carrier and having independent adjusters or even staff adjusters who didn't take enough photos of something, mm -hmm. like the, that didn't give me enough photos of the roof, I have to send somebody back out right. to go verify that there's 19 vents on the back side of the house and there's a cricket and there's a this and there's a that and a whatever, because they didn't get a picture of the back slope, right? right? If I have one, one right. high res photo of showing the whole roof at the time of the inspection, yes. I can say, all right, well, there's one, two, three, 19, you know, uh, turtle vents on that back slope. Then I can make a more accurate estimate. I can say, sure. all right, well, it's, you know, the, the contractor saying that there's a uh, whatever on the backside, I can verify, yes, it's there or no, it's not. I don't, he's thinking of a different house, whatever. Right. I can have a more accurate estimate on the back end. It's going to save me time as a desk adjuster because I don't have to send out a task to somebody back out in the field to go back out and look at it, you know, or just trust that the contractor is going to send me the good photos. You know, if I, if I want to just trust the contractor, which there's no reason not to trust contractors. Right. <laughs> um, so I think that the same thing goes as the independent adjuster on the front side, mm -hmm. as I'm working on my estimate and this, this happens, you know, I forgot to get a photo of the back slope. I, if I'm still at the house, I'm going to go get that photo of the back slope. I, it needs to be in the file. But if it's a day later or two days later or, or a week or two later, and I get a file sent back to me saying, hey, Matt, you know, you forgot the photo on the back, side, the back slope of the house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we need to see how many roof penetrations there were. You said there wasn't any damage, but we have to document this file. Right. right? So I can go back and look at my 90 second drone up drone down photo yep. and say oh okay well you know here's there's this many vents on the back side of the house, or whatever it is right yeah yeah i can have a, a much more accurate estimate on the front end and then later on i think this this kind of thing helps desk adjusters to spend less time sending things out to the field and going on the honor system a lot of times um, because documentation photos are like the number one absolute thing that are going to help us, you know, yeah. close uh, claims, right? I, I can explain a, a couple of things that we're going to be doing. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but the idea here is that um, like today, uh, Certify is the ability of going up, taking that one photo, just specifically for measurement purposes. However, on the way down, there'll be another flight, uh, whether it's done manually today or automated in the future. It's the idea that a adjuster can go over and document that roof, send those images back to us, we can go off and create an Xactimate um, output uh, itself, whether we're measuring it and creating just the, the line drawing and saying, you know, here are the measurements, but more importantly, it's taking those images and being able to create some type of uh, output file that could be uploaded back into Xactimate. That's like where we're going in the future 
Um, but that future is like imminent, like this month, the ability of being able to send us images. We do a little bit of work that you guys normally would have done, but you're going to be much more productive uh, by being able to, um, you know, go on and do multiple jobs throughout the day. You know, maybe instead of doing right. five or six a day, you're doing 10 a day because we've doubled your productivity because we've taken the measurements out of it. And we have now essentially made your workload easier um, by having those images identified, eyeballs on it, um, and then all the line items are all done. You have to review it, obviously, it's under your name, but it's something that can be done. There's a whole cottage industry of supplementers that are out there that work in the roofing right. side of the business. But for us, we can do that and work with both the IAs and the roofing contractors to meet their needs. Absolutely, absolutely. If you're an auto claims adjuster or appraiser, you already know that SCA is one of the top companies that you can work for on the auto side. But if you're a property adjuster who's never done any auto, you may have never even heard of SCA. We've heard of them now. SCA Claim Services is launching their property division and they're poised to bring their decades of claims management experience and extensive resources to the property side of things. Insurance carriers already trust SCA because they know they will always receive a high level of customer service and policyholder satisfaction. And with literally millions of claims handled in SCA's four decade history, carriers trust SCA to help them avoid unnecessary costs by handling every claim every time with unparalleled accuracy and a commitment to doing things the right way. I mean, these guys are old school, right? Since 1979, SCA has been exceeding expectations. Only a company dedicated to serving and taking care of people, including their adjusters, can a company like this continue to grow in this industry. Join the team with industry-leading NPS scores and cycle times that has the resources to bring new opportunities for not only auto adjusters, but now for property adjusters. To get started with SCA Claim Services, head on over to adjustertv.com slash SCA. And while you're there, don't forget to download the totally free SCA Claim Services Field Adjuster Gear Guide. Again, that's adjustertv.com slash SCA to download the free gear guide and to apply. This is pretty cool stuff. I mean, this is this, this kind of technology, um, I, I feel like, if if you're if you're looking at a piece of technology, and you're like, well, you know, I mean, it's it's I, it'd probably be okay, you know, but I, I see all these have all these objections to it. I think these days you just have to say to yourself, let's just wait two years, mm. right, or a year or three years, and then things will start to happen. So as as you say, you know, being able to to get um, a report within. 15 minutes of the drone landing yeah. that has measurements and everything. And That's then an hour cool. after that, you're getting, you can get an ESX. If you're knocking that down to like the whole thing takes 15 minutes or 10 minutes, you have an ESX in your inbox. While I'm at the house, it might take me 15, 20, 10, 20, 25 minutes, maybe just depending on the size of the house and then how many outbuildings there are on the outside. Yep. I'm scoping the loss. I jump back in my truck and um, I can write the estimate or have the estimate half written or mostly written already. Right. Well, you'll have You're the right. I mean, 15 and you can start working off of those measurements. The ESX file is going to be identical to what the measurements themselves actually are. Right. It's, that's, that's significant. I, I think, you know, adjusters, when they think about when I say as a, as a field adjuster, I can do 10 a day or I can, you know, I try to do seven to nine claims a day on mm -hmm. hail or wind, right? not talk, talking about large water loss or fire losses or anything like mm -hmm. that. The repetitive, you know, especially if you're in a house with, or in a neighborhood with smaller houses, um, the, the limiting factor there is the time it takes to diagram and measure stuff, right? This is why hover is so amazing. This is why this, this kind of technology is so amazing. Um, if I get into a neighborhood where there, the houses are all 30 to 45 square roofs and they're all steep and got a lot of facets on them, if I can run that drone up, scope the loss and then jump back in the truck and write, cause I write on site, right. write that thing up. I've saved myself. It might take me 30 minutes just to measure and diagram that, that roof. Sure. Yeah. If it's already done because it took, you know, I, I maybe it's, you add a couple, two, three minutes on and pulling the drone out and getting the wings out and then, you know, yeah. plugging the, your phone into the, the, the controller and all, whatever, maybe it takes five minutes. Mm -hmm. So the drone up pops it back down. 
it's you know you, the app sends off the report or the, the data and then you get to, it starts working on the, you know crunching the numbers or whatever mm -hmm. that that's that's a kind of a game changer that for me um would make it to where i could do 10 to 14 or 15 claims a day easily instead of seven to nine claims easily right if i start at seven o'clock in the morning and i go to seven o'clock at night I'm gonna make I'm gonna make hay while the sun shines. I'm gonna go as fast as I can. Right. I want to make sure that I have high quality and have great customer service. Having outsourcing the measurements and the diagrams and stuff that that make that file look really good and that yeah. helps people downstream. Yes. I think is is um, that's a big deal for us. And I think that that it, it this kind of thing helps elevate our industry because we're able to provide a high quality, accurate file that you know has a lot of documentation automatically that you know if 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 we fall down on some part of it at least we have you know accurate measurements that right. um and you know, i can jump later in on somebody can say that that accurate, yeah absolutely of it too um What's nice about using a drone versus, say, a company, um, you know, like one of my former employers is pretty much it. But instead of using yeah. those types of companies, um, the drone, the image itself is up to date, right? So if there's any additions to the house, they're already included. Yeah. Um, oftentimes when you order a report, um, not necessarily, say, a hover, but if you order, say, an Eagle View or something else, that might be a situation where you're reliant on your knowledge of the property. Well, which building is it? And you don't really know because you haven't been there before. So you're ordering it in advance. And sometimes, many times actually, you could put a push a um, button and not necessarily get the right, bu right building back. Um, that's happened time and again over time, not disparage anybody, but that, that absolutely is an issue with accuracy. The other aspect of it is when you're dealing with like aerial uh, companies, they, they call themselves satellite companies, but they're really aerial photography is the images that you use. Um, right. When you're doing that, um, from an aerial photography perspective, they're generally shot at four to six inch per pixel resolution. Um, when you're using a drone image, it's only shot from a couple hundred feet high. <laughs> it might specifically be only three eighths of an inch per pixel resolution. So when somebody's drawing it, if they're off by like one pixel and they're using like an aerial photography type company, they're off by between four and six inches. You do it with yeah. a drone and we're drawing it. We're only off by three eighths of an inch. So it's really easy, much more easier to be accurate. As a matter of fact, when we come to market, we're probably going to say overtly that we're probably sub 1% uh, margin of error. So, I mean, from an you won't get any QAs kicking back. Hey, your your you know your squares are off, and it's like I'm you know I'm short by five squares. It's like no, you're not, and all that goes back with it. It's like right. be as precise as possible, but it's precise because of the drone image is up to date. The drone image is is much more detailed. Um, the drone image can actually be done. Sometimes you'll order a report, and you get what are called two D reports or uh, pre pitch reports and you just say, you know, we're in a rural area, you can't really do that one, you know, and that doesn't happen with the drone. If you can see it, it can be drawn and we can do right. that today. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. So let's talk a little bit about how people can kind of find out more information about how drones can fit into their claims workflow. Like what, how can people find your information, find that white paper? Yeah. Um, where are you guys on social media? What, and what, all what, I, what I would suggest is for anybody that's an IA or an IA firm or even a carrier, um, there's about 750 currently um, IAs, mostly IAs that are in this drones for insurance, Facebook group. So just type it in drones for insurance, Facebook, and you'll be able to come to that group. We'll get you in. And oftentimes I will post that particular, I call it like a, a, a white paper. I'll post that. They can also email me at jeffrey.marcus at certify.com and I can easily send it to them. Um, so just normal spelling, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y dot M-A-R-C-U-S at certify.com. So um, that's how people can reach me. It's probably the best way of doing it. 
uh, certify if somebody has um, a drone like a Mavic 2 Pro or a Mavic 2 Zoom, they could actually start today. They could go to our website and download uh, the app. It's called the Certify Roof app. That's something that can happen immediately. Um, there's uh, no, it's all on a pay as you go basis. Um, so there's no subscription or anything like that. They could try it one at a time if they really wanted to get into it. Thank you very much. It's been really great speaking with you, Matt. I mean, like, <laughs> terrific speaking with you. You have no idea. And um, we do appreciate, uh, you know, working with the carriers, working with the IA firms. There is much more in the pipeline that I haven't even revealed. Uh, but we feel very strongly based off of our experiences, the patent that we have that went, goes back to 2011, that's going to kind of keep some of these competitors at bay. Um, you know, working with companies that I've worked with in the past, um, I think it'll be good. And the thing about it is from a technology standpoint, you're right. When I was literally back in 2005, I had a HR person or a vendor management person say, you know, insurance industry is like the Queen Mary. You just can't get that boat to turn around fast enough. It's like right. really slow going. And I always yeah. remember that. So I know we're in it for the long haul. We've been doing this for more than a decade. Um, I can tell you though, things do change. And just at, like, for example, at pictometry, we have a lawyer there and it's like, no, no, no. You know, when you're, when you're signing contracts, you got to have two contracts, right? You sign it and then we sign it and then you send them both. And then it's like, okay, can we, you know, can we do something better? And it's like, no, no, no that's the way it is, you know? And then it's you're like, right. well, can we just get the facts of the signature page? Yeah, we could do that. Okay, fine. And then it's like, <laughs> okay, can we just get them to digitally sign it? Yeah, okay. So th things change, right? We don't notice it, but they do change. And we think the same thing with drones. We truly do believe that although people right now are hesitant, they might think there's privacy issues or liability issues, but those issues do go away once they realize that 80% of the time that people are actually using their drones, they can feel good about it. And the 20% of the time that they're not gonna be able to use a drone, that the carrier's saying, no, 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 get up on that roof. I really wanna see that microscopic hail. Um, great, we fully support the idea that a adjuster should just do their job and still get up, smell those granules uh, and make a good call. You know, But for the 80% of the time, that it's not necessary that the da the hand da or I'm sorry that the damage is obvious. Why put people at risk? And that's really what we're trying to do is keep people safe as well. If you enjoyed this episode of Adjuster TV Radio, leave us a five star review on iTunes. Find more episodes at adjustertv.com/podcast. This is Adjuster TV.